So, um, uh, that's old. By now, there's gotta be another video up, right? There's one. Okay. Worst HUD? That's not what right. is up? Because okay. it was... Oh. He did this on purpose. I've seen this one. Well, here we go. HUD Act by Zyperion. Infuriate your future today. This guide covers HUD edits for Dirty Bomb version 2.0. Installation procedures may vary as this was performed on a Windows 7 platform. Most of the other procedures should be similar. This video serves as an accompaniment to his rather decent non-video tutorial which you can find online at the official Dirty Bomb forums. The link is in the description and most steps you can find there. Please note that there are several bugs in this software as it is still in development. Not all features are fully working, and most of the primary bugs are also splash damage's fault, as confirmed by developers and SHU. And before I continue, if you're not interested in creating your own HUD, you can use one that looks like this. There's a link in the description that will forward to a drive shared file. Just click download on this file. Trust me, it's not a virus. Once it's downloaded, you should find it in your downloads and make sure that you copy it. And then you can place the file under My Documents, My Games, Shooter Engine 3, Shooter Game, Config, delete the shooter UI that is already in the folder, paste the one from your downloads, and then make sure that you set it to Read Only under your Properties. And for those of you who do want to create your own HUD, let's continue. To start off with, you'll need to get the version of HUD Edit and the version of Java that are acceptable for your computer. On Windows 7, you can do this by clicking Start, then right-clicking Computer, and choosing Properties. For most Windows 7 users, it'll be a 64-bit operating system. Anyway, you'll need to install the latest version of Java for your PC. If you already have it, tell it to update. Otherwise, click the link in my description. It will link to this same page that I just clicked off of the forms. Make sure that you accept the license agreement, and then proceed to download the version that works for your computer. I myself got an installer, but choose whatever you're comfortable with. If the link doesn't work for you, you can just search Java and Google, and then download it through there. You can download it through java.com or through Oracle. If you're using Chrome, Java might complain just a little bit, but it's fine. It doesn't apply to you since you're not trying to attach it to Chrome. I've already downloaded it. All you have to do after it's downloaded is go to your downloads folder, locate the file, and make sure that you run it. You may need to accept permissions or have an administrator do it for you if you're not an administrator. Then it will fully start and all you have to do is click install. While installing you should probably go to the forums and go to the download links and make sure that you get the version that also complements the version of Java that you installed. I've downloaded the HUD edit that I needed as well so all you have to really do is go to where it is in your downloads and make sure that you extract it to a separate folder inside your downloads. As you can see, I've already done this too. If you've properly extracted it, it should look like this. Also, a quick update before continuing. If Java gives you a notification that you already have a different version of Java on your computer, you should probably delete it for your own safety. There's no reason for you to have two versions of Java lying around. Now that we have all of that out of the way, let's make a HUD. First of all, make sure you launch HUD Edit in Administrator mode. When it launches, you'll get a screen that looks like this. 
On this screen, you'll need to select your aspect ratio for your screen, and then your screen's resolution, or at least the one that you use in Dirty Bomb. After you've done this, feel free to hit OK. It will then load a screen that is the exact same size as your resolution. You should drag it until it completely fits your monitor, and then prepare for awesome sauce. First of all, when you minimize this program, it will minimize to a small double clickable item on the left side, not to your taskbar. You can move this item to somewhere else if you would like, but whenever you're ready to continue or open the program back up, just double click the item. In program, you can access the settings by clicking the gear icon on the lower left hand corner of the screen. The settings can also be moved to your lighting. The settings are also openable and closable by right clicking. If you want to open the settings for a specific asset, simply left click the asset and then right click. Now to move an asset, you must click first and then click again and drag it to where you want it to. This is the easiest way to move it. The little circle that appears around or above or at sides of the object is actually just telling you where the attachment is. I'll explain further what attachment means when I explain how to fit your HUD and notepad later. Besides the double click and drag method of moving objects, you can also place them by the exact pixel location under settings. Now, regarding the object I'm specifically messing with in this scene, it's also known as the objective notification. I'm not sure if this is limited to just the X64 version of this program or if it's also in the X32 but this will spawn directly in the dead center of your screen sometimes. I recommend that you figure out where you want it, and then you put that in later. Make sure you record the X and Y values in a notepad document. In fact, for me, this object wasn't even being exported correctly when I saved my preset. The good news is, this is actually the only placement bug that I've found apart from the already mentioned ones in his known bugs area. Other people have mentioned it as well, and even Rare experienced this bud, though he perhaps didn't know it was actually bud that caused it. Other misplaced items are as follows. You will see a significant move in the Game Wave Timer, a slight move in the Minimap, a slight move in the Detected Notification, and a slight move in the Experience Counter. The bugs that cause these may be attachment related, and again, I'll explain that soon. But please note that it is definitely not Zyphirion's fault for the majority of these misplacement bugs. If you find any bugs that are not in the known bugs area, please head to the forums and fill in a bug report form. This will help tremendously. Now, here's where we get to the painful part. Not only am I going to show you what I mean by attachments and what editing the file is in a notepad format, I'm also going to show you all the extra pain that you'll need to go through just to make sure that all of your items go where you want them to be. So, you finally got your HUD right where you want it. All the items are in the right places in HUD Edit, and maybe even mess with the colors of allies and chat, etc. What you need to do is go to Settings, and then at the very bottom of Settings, make sure you hit Save Preset. This will open a dialog box with the correct setting for the document, and it'll ask you where do you want to save it. Please make sure that you have a copy of whatever your current shooter configuration UI is or save the configuration file in a spot that you can easily remember and access later. To fully activate your HUD, navigate to the Shooter Game Configuration folder where the Shooter UI.ini is for Dirty Bomb. Then select Shooter UI and then delete it. Replace it with the one that you created from the one that you saved, or save over it from inside of the program. You should probably save whatever your current UI is every time that you make changes or create a new one. This just ensures that you don't lose any progress and that your UI constantly works for you. I recommend doing this in a separate folder. In fact, on screen you'll see that I pasted my current UI into it. Now, navigating back to the other folder, when you delete or move your shooter UI into the configuration folder, you may need to provide administrator permissions. And once your new UI is in your folder, make sure that you right-click, head to Properties, and then check the read-only bots under Attributes. If you fail to follow this step, every single time that Dirty Bomb starts, it will populate a new HUD and delete your old one. 
Now the only way to see what happens is to start Dirty Bomb up and see what it looks like in game. Whenever you first start Dirty Bomb, since you did check the other file as read only and it, this saves it from being stopped by Dirty Bomb populating a new HUD, you will get an error pop up. It is absolutely okay to hit OK to this pop up and Dirty Bomb will still start. You will not be banned for having a different HUD or for changing your shooter UI file. Please be aware that when you load into game, your HUD's probably not going to be perfect on the first try. This was my first try, and it was far from perfect. As you can see, my stuff is all over the place, and I realized that my hit points are a little closer to my crosshair than I wanted them. As you can see, the spawn timer is way off, and my abilities look like they're covering the map. <laughs> Rip. As you can tell, it's a little difficult to play with the current version of this HUD. So, here are some hard learned tips from Vanilla for editing your HUD further and better and more efficiently. Number one, minimize the HUD editor and do not close it or you will lose all of your progress. Feel free to open it up once you're in game and even make desk changes on all the objects that you want to move. It may not always appear over the game, but if that's an issue, you can just alt-tab. All you have to really do is just make sure that you double-click the little bar and open up the editor. As you may notice in this, Dirty Bomb is still open. If you save a preset and create a new shooter UI and put it in the folder, you will need to completely close out of Dirty Bomb and restart it to see the effects that you made to your HUD. Don't forget to uncheck and recheck read-only when making changes and before starting the game so that your changes are saved without Dirty Bomb deleting them. Also, it will probably take you a lot of time to truly get everything right where you want it. So don't fret if it takes a while. Erhan said that I can possibly take the X and Y profile of each object, write it down in Notepad, and then fill it in inside of the actual configuration file. However, for me, this didn't work. I recommend doing it the good old eyeball and drag way. And another way to do this well is to possibly take screenshots while you're in game that are vital, navigate to them in your Steam files, and then use them to try and approximate how much you need to drag an object. You may be asking yourself, Vanilla, why would I want to use HUD Edit if there's this many problems and that it would take this long? The truth is, it simplifies 90% of everything that you're doing. You don't have to go through the shooter UI file, find every X and Y coordinate and every object area, and then place them in your cell. This is a screenshot of, on the right side, one of my X ports couldn't even find objective notification, yet on the left side, objective notification position was actually denoted by Dirty Bomb's original HUD. At a minimum, X64 users may need to add this line to their own configuration files. Good news is, there are several updates planned for the future by Zyphurion. And to any haters that think I stole a HUD from NATO, no, I legit worked on this HUD while being smashed in by him. The only inspiration I have from him is that my oldest center HUD was created by him on his first single video, like a year ago. The HUD I offered in the beginning is a 1920 by 1080 HUD that I created using HUD Edit. I adapted the colors to be similar, but I like having purple allies and yellow enemies. Not only do they stand out better, but it also mocks spectator mode. What you're seeing in front of you is legit me moving stuff around just a little bit based off of what I was seeing in game, while Dirty Bomb is still launched and I myself am still in a game. Again, you will not see the changes until you export your save preset and you completely quit out of Dirty Bomb and make sure that your new shooter UI is set to read only. Alright you Dirty Bombs. Enjoy the program, make your own HUD, and start Don't playing your dirty Don't that boy. I really want help. Real quick, I want to extend an extra thanks to Zyphereon for creating such an awesome program. 
I had an absolute pleasure making a guide for, for you. I also want to thank Splashdowns for creating an awesome video game that I've enjoyed for a year and a half now. If you like this video, please feel free to subscribe and know that, but please know that most of my content is not guide related. As always, stay frosty and thanks for watching.